Welcome to the optical communication course. Today we will see that what are the various noises in the optical receiver. So we have seen that earlier we have started with the optical receiver operation. We say that the light emitting diode emits a photon that is a light. That light launches in the optical fiber that will be propagating through the optical fiber. And at the receiver that light will fall on the detector. Once the light, light falls on the detector, then the detector detects whichever the light is there and according to that current is generated. Now here, we will consider that light falls on the detector means what? Light contains a photon here, photon of energy. Now each photon will generate an electron hole pair. And because of the generation of electron hole pair, we will get the current and that's why we will get the output. So we need to convert. So we have seen that a one uh, setup about uh, how your signal transmission here through an optical link that is about a signal path through an optical data link that we have seen diode. Okay, likewise we have seen. And at the receiver, we say we require a decision circuitry to understand that that information, whether that information is 1 or 0, whichever the data we are transmitting, whether we are accurately receiving that data or not. So before learn this amplifier and this decision circuit, so we need to know about what are the various noises. So there are various noises in the optical fiber. That noises are called as a quantum noise and a dark current noise. Along with that, there is a, a thermal noise. Now, that thermal noise at this detector, because a load register is it, because of there is a load register, and because of that load register, a thermal generation, thermal process started, so that's why there will be a thermal noise. Now we'll talk about the thermal noise data. So there are the two noise basically in a detector that is about a quantum noise and a dark current noise. Now that quantum noise is nothing but a statistical process or we can say that that quantum noise is nothing but a poison process. And because of that, a noise is generated that is called as a short noise or you can say that a quantum noise. Now this a short noise we can express in terms of twice of Q IP into beta I. Now this is about a current your charge. Since we say that a noise is generated from the statistical nature of a production of the electrons there and because we can say that the role of this detector is nothing but generate that electron and whole pair so it generates that electron and whole pair when the signal incident on this a detector there Now there is a fluctuation in that carrier generation and because of that fluctuation so then that fluctuation is nothing but a, a noise in the detector. So that's why we have written that a short noise i square short is equal to twice q ip into beta i. This one is about a receiver bandwidth, current and this m is a multiplication factor and f of m is about a noise figure or a figure of noise. Now these are the two factor in this equation. If there will be a avalanche photo detector, then these two factor will come. If there is no avalanche photo detector, then short noise for the pin diode is nothing but twice q, ip and beta i. So this figure of noise 
it is nothing but a random nature and that is occur because of that avalanche process so that is about a short time next is about a dark noise or we can say that a darker noise but if you see that a darker noise it has a, a two types that is about one is about a bulk dark current that we can write here i t b here and then another is about we can say that a surface dark current okay we can write that is about sorry dark surface current ids dark bulk id so we can write that that equation in terms of the dark current now this dark current we can say that there are the two types bulk dark current and a, a surface dark current now we'll start here to know about how this bulk dark current arises in the photo diode so it is just like a bulk dark current it is in a occur when there is a no light dark current means what dark current noise means what a no light is there no light is propagating through the detector or we can say that we have a transmitter and receiver there is no transmission takes place from the source when there is no light in a no light condition that current is generated in a no light current con that bulk dark current there is no light current condition that current is generated and that current is called as a dark current then a bulk dark current and a surface dark current in a bulk dark current we say that electrons and hole pairs are generated because the role of a detector is what it will generate that electron and hole pair but this electron and whole pairs are generated because of a thermal process because of a thermal process or you can say that thermally generated electron hole pair so because of the thermally generated electron hole pair a current is propagating through this device so that is called as a bulk dark current now if you consider that a avalanche photodiode so here we can say that electron and hole pair generated and these are the nothing but accelerated because of that high electric field present at the junction there so avalanche photodiode because there is a multiplication process so that's why that multiplication process or that mechanism occur in that avalanche photodiode even if there is a no light and that is called as a we can say that a bulk dark current so we can write that the equation of a bulk dark current that is a mean square value of this current is i db mean square value is equal to we can say that we can write in terms of a variance also that equation so that is about a twice of a q which over the current is propagating that is the dark current m square and 
f of m and this p now this term is two times m and f of m that is for the avalanche photodiode and this id that is the a dot current propagating through the device when there is a no light next is about a surface dark current in the case of a surface dark current on the surface of your detector there is some leakage current and that current is called as the surface leakage current but without a light that current is generated so that's why you can say that it is about a surface leakage current and that is called as a, because there is no light so that's why surface dark current so that surface leakage current it is depend on the surface defect as well as whatever the surface area of the detector there so that surface detector surface current can be written in terms of a mean square value of a surface dark current that is a i square ds is equal to a twice of u that is about a current is propagating that surface dark current is propagating through the load resistor so that's why i l here and that is l is for the leakage current okay that is about a, a surface leakage current and into that is about a receiver bandwidth now this surface dark current that is on the surface of the detector so that's why a avalanche photodiode in that avalanche photodiode the surface dark current is not occur because the avalanche multiplication process is occur in a bulk effect because of the bulk effect so that's why a bulk dark avalanche in a avalanche photodiode bulk dark current will be there but in avalanche photodiode there is no surface dark current so we can write a total equation for this that is about a total mean square photo detector noise current total mean square photo detector noise current that is equal to what i square n that is mean square here is equal to we have i square short that is about a short current plus i square db that is a bulk dark current plus i square ds that is about a bulk bulk dark current and surface dark current idea so you can write the equation in terms of what q that is ip plus id m square f of m to b plus twice q il into c so these are the two terms that is about a short current and a bulk dark current and this one is about only the surface dark current that is about the equation but again if you consider that 
there is a, a thermal noise current and that thermal noise current generated because of that a load register so that's why a photo detector load register that will contribute to the a thermal noise current so that can be expressed contribution of the thermal noise due to the load registers at a detector because we have this a load registers we are using across the detector and and that load register will be act as a input to the uh, that way that will be what you can say amplifier here to amplifier input impedance it is to be greater than the load register if we can say that amplifier input register it is to be a smaller then this noise will be generated if we consider that to reduce this thermal noise that amplifier input resistance is to be increased there and that will be if we can say that a amplifier input resistance we can suppose to be consider that it is to be greater than that a load resistance so that will reduce the thermal noise if amplifier input resistance is greater than the load resistance of a photo detector this is about a photo detector load resistor or this we can say that a amplifier input better if that input impedance is greater than that the load ratio then this thermal noise can be reduced here so that's why we can write that a mean square of a thermal noise generated so that thermal noise again we can say that a johnson noise so you can write that i square of a t that is about a thermal noise is equal to 4 kb t divided by rl now this a kb is a boltzmann constant and that t is nothing but what a absolute temperature so now if you consider that there is the process if we consider that in this given equation thermal noise if that load resistance is a increase here then we can say that the thermal noise will be reduced here now this equation it is itself it is saying that this is about kb is a constant that t is a temperature is a constant that is about a optical receiver so again only supposed to be this one is increases so then these are the factors reduce but it is depending upon again we need to know about what will be the receiver bandwidth requirement so according to that we can reduce the thermal noise so that is about a noise generated what are the various noise generated at this detectors and all these are the noise generated at the detector and that noise are nothing but what we can say a short noise then a detector noise a 
sorry, uh, that at the detector, it's putting the body thermal noise. Then we can have a dark current noise. So now these are about the noise generated in the receiver there, uh, in the detector there. So now next, we consider that because here a detector, there is a load resistance and amplifier. So that's why this noise at a receiver here. Okay, this noise will be at a receiver there. So now we started here earlier. We say that a signal path. Now we'll see that what are the basic sections. of a receiver there in bracket to say that a optical receiver so now that optical receiver if you see that there is a detector so light falls on this detector and then that use the input to the, the front end amplifier. Front end amplifier. Then we have the filter, oblique equalizer. Then a sampling circuit, then we have a decision circuit, and then we'll get the output. out okay and for this we require a clock recovery now this one is about your diagram we have a photo detector here then we have the front end amplifier till then we have a decision circuit based on this sampling process and a equalizer there now here we consider that a sampling circuit and a decision circuit role is here so whichever the a level of the signal we are receiving because our information that will be in the terms of 1 and 0 means we say that this will be a 1 this will be a 0 likewise 1 0 1 0 there if supposed to be again here this is about 1 1 supposed to be this type of a information here when we are sending some information it has some binary input level that will be a 1 0 that is about a format here now for 1 there is some voltage level and for 0 there is some voltage level now we can consider that some level that is V max and V minimum so maximum nothing but a zero here okay. it is nothing voltage minimum is nothing but a zero but maximum some values we have but in ideal condition if you see that for the bit we supposed to be consider that this is nothing but a one we are expecting but at a receiver some noise will be there and because of that noise we are getting receiving the signal here some for the zero because of that noise for the zero some label we are getting similarly for 
one, that level will be fluctuating because of the noise here. So means at this, this will be minimum value for the one, and this will be maximum value for the zero. Now in the case of the receive signal, we need to consider that some specific reference level above that particular specific reference level, then that belongs to a 1 and above below that 1, that belongs to a 0. So that's why we can consider that some particular a threshold value. We can say that some threshold value or some particular threshold level that we have to be used. So if the received signal, if it is whatever the received signal by the receiver, if it is greater than the threshold level 1, then we can say that we received the bit that is a 1. And if the received voltage that will be below the threshold value, then we can say that we received the zero bit. Now here the concept of a decision circuit regarding that one or a zero because the sampling circuit produces the one particular sample output and according to the decision circuit then they say some for a given particular level that will be defined as a 1 or a 0. So now that's why that a receiver should know that at what value of a level that is to be 1 and what value of the level below that received by the receiver that will be a 0. So for this particular bit, there should be some boundaries and that boundaries are to be defined by this a receiver there. So at a receiver, the decision circuitry should mention that what are the boundaries for the 1 and a 0 there. Again at a receiver, we can consider that that data is to be received within that particular period or a particular bit duration. So that's why a clock is required and that clock is equal to the whatever the bit interval. So if that clock is not equal to the bit interval, so then, then it will be difficult to identify the information there. Now, in the, if you consider that a receiver, so here, just like a after photo detector, that fronted amplifier is used, that is about an optical amplifier, we say, that is after detector. So amplify the whatever the signal and then it will give us given to the decision circuitry. But in some cases that opti optical amplifier that will be before the detector. Before detector amplifier is there, it will increase the optical signal level and then it will be transmitted to the that light will be fall on this detector. So that is called as a, a pre-amplifier here or we can say that that amplifier is used to just boost the whatever the light. But here after detector, this amplifier is just like is used to amplify the whichever the level is received by the or whichever the current is received by the 
detector there. This current is amplified. If it is used before this, so it will amplify the whatever the light is there. So now if supposed to be we are using that amplifier before the detector, photon of light will be photon, whatever the light is there is coming from the detector. A source. So now in this case here, we have a signal path here. So we can say that it, there is a detector. Now after detector, if we use amplifier here, it will amplify the current. If we use that before the detector, after fiber there is amplifier. You can say that optical preamplifier here, it will increase the light. And that is used that amplifier before the detector that is used to suppress the a thermal noise. Thermal noise because the thermal noise that will be generated at the receiver because of the amplifier. So we will consider that a one by one the optical amplifier now we talk about that what are the various error sources in the detector there as we have studied earlier that error sources are nothing but a noise generated so that's why we need to know about what will be the power received by the receiver there error sources now generally we can say that we have the detector okay this one is about a photon stream that we can say that is about hv Generally, H V V is nothing but a frequency here. H is the Planck constant. V is equal to what C by lambda. That is about the energy. Okay, photon of energy. And then we can consider that whatever the detector we have. Photo detector here. After that. We require the amplifier. Before that, we require a YF register. Now, if you see here, for each and every process. Here the photon of emitting from this. So that's why at this particular case we are getting a noise that is a photon detection. Quantum noise. That is we can consider that a poison noise or you can say that a poison fluctuation. Nice or a short noise. Okay, this one. Another noise at a detector that will be a dark current noise. And that photo detection, we can say that it is about a statistical process. So if it is the avalanche photodiode, then we can write that gain will be a M here. Okay, if it is a avalanche photo. So that's why a statistical fluctuation of a gain because of that APDF. 
because of this resistor there will be a thermal noise and then because of that amplifier there will be amplifier noise. so now this noise already we have seen that and these noise are just like we can say that the error sources for the a receiver here and that a photon of energy emit because of that it detects at a detector a fluctuation occurs and that fluctuation is nothing but a photon of now why the noise are short noise no light there is a darker noise the darker noise is about we can say that a bulk dark current and a, we can say that a surface dark current that is about it and the thermal noise because of a load resistors and that fluctuations in the load resistor because of a thermal process so there will be a noise there and then we have the amplifier noise at the amplifier but if you consider that a noise here in the complete receiver circuitry this one is about a d2 detector after detector we have a load resistors and then we have the amplifier so there are the various noise sources in the a device there and then we need to know about that how many elect how many how much will be the current is generated and that current is generated because of that whatever the photon or photon there so it will generate a electron hole pair so if it is the avalanche photodiode then we can consider that it generates a a photon photon if each photon generate a electron hole pair but in the case of avalanche photodiode so each photon generated a multiple electron hole pair so we should know that that particular noise if we consider that a pin diode or a avalanche photodiode so which noise is dominating so that is depending upon that we what about the material because here if avalanche process so that's why so that avalanche photodiode because multiplication process there so noise will be again a multiplicative in, in nature here but in the case of a pin diode so that it is just like it generate that electron and hole pair for each photon so that's why in a pin diode so that noise is generated because of that load resistor and noise is generated because of that amplifier that will be a dominant in the pin diode so that is about a discussion we can consider that and that we already mentioned that what are the various noise sources are present and then we say that there is about a a noise now because of noise what will happen so generally we we are expecting that a signal is to be received they have some particular level we say but what happen at the receiver 
that signal spread. Means we can say that we are expecting this type of a signal, but at the receiver, that will be the signal spreading text line. And because of that signal spreading, or we can say that pulse spreading, so then there will be a inter symbol interference. Because pulses are overlap each other here. Because we are expecting this type of pulse, but the duration here is a small, but duration is large. And we are expecting the duration that is about a short duration of a particular bit TB. But here, that short duration TB is likewise. Because of that pulse spreading, so this duration for the bit is increased here. So then, for a one bit, if it is a multiple bit, then our pulses will overlap. So likewise, there will be overlapping of the pulses text because of that a pulse spreading. And that pulse spreading is not a part of a receiver because pulse spreading is induced because of that optical fiber. Which optical fiber you are using according that pulse spreading is occurred. So that is nothing but a dispersion. So then the types of a dispersion that is intermodal dispersion, intramodal dispersion, waveguide dispersion. That is about a dispersion because of the a optical fiber. And because of that dispersion, a pulse spreading is occur. And because of that pulse spreading, there will be inter-symbol interplay. So then at the detector, we need to decide that where is the one and at what time, what period of a time that particular bit is, bit is to be read out by the decision circuit. And that is about a tricky process here. So that's why we need to choose an optical fiber it has a low distortion or a low dispersion so that at a decision decision circuit will work efficiently. So we'll consider one by one the factors of or a component of optical receiver because we need to talk about that a performance of a receiver, the performance of a receiver is depending upon that whether we are expect we are receiving one bit or a zero bit. When we are transmitting one bit, whether we are receiving one bit or not, when we are transmitting zero bit, when we are receiving the zero, whether we are receiving zero bit or not. So according to that, we can say that a probability of it bit arrival probability of a bit transmitted. So we will consider in the receiving section. So that is about today's we have learned that various noise and various noise sources.